Hall Army Wrestling Radio Show. I'm Jordan Tom, fought with Brian Rowan and Coach Ward. What's up, fellas? He's got his intro music going. It's good. It's Man, good. I am fired up. What you yeah. got playing? This is just my walkout song. It's not a big deal. It's just walkout music. Do you don't play that everywhere you go? No, no, I'm not. Usually, I'm usually I that. have somebody else play it when I walk into a room, but nobody's here tonight, so I had to play it myself. So I'm, I'm here for it. What song is that? That's the classic like lead out song. It's just a lead out that's song. The, that's the that's the UNC or that's the um the Chicago Bulls, you know, '90s little that's run right. song that they used to go to. I just like, it, that's what's known for. I typed in Kevin Ward walkout music, and I just clicked play. That was it. Uh, I had a very bad walkout song when I was at Army. It took them like uh, six home matches to realize that it said a lot of bad words in it. They played it? Oh, they played it at all kinds of What was your walkout song? It was called Racks on Racks, and it was talking about like stacking up money. <laughs> <laughs> and they let, so, so now, like, you got to send your music, and the marketing department has to approve it beforehand. Like, there's no getting away with that anymore. They listen to it. You can do the edited version, though. Yeah, I don't even remember. They came and they're like, hey, you, your song's like no good anymore. Like the general or something heard it. Like that's, it's, it's off. <laughs> so like the pick something else. <laughs> There's only three of them at West Point. The general heard it. Yeah, the generals. <laughs> <laughs> B-Row, I mean, this isn't what we plan on starting the show with, but what was your walkout song? This is the stuff that we didn't know that we needed, but we figured it out. The content that we didn't know we needed so badly. Yeah. Um, mine was... Lincoln Park, numb. Oh, just stop. But with the J the Jay Z version, it oh, had like Jay Z playing in it. I don't know if you remember it. It's it, it gets me fired up still to this day. I may have it still in my workout playlist to this that day. it's like I tried so hard, and in the end, it didn't even matter. No, that's that's not numb. That's uh. Well, that'd be a great walkout that's song because you'd just be like an auto pin six. I tried hard and didn't matter. It does it? It does it even. <laughs> I think that's crawling. That's crawling. Have you have you even worked out in an army gym if Lincoln Park and Jay Z aren't playing? That's right. Or let the bodies <laughs> hit the floor. <laughs> that's good stuff. So what Jordan didn't mention it. So. So Jordan didn't mention it when he introduced himself, but uh, he should have introduced himself as Mr. Jordan Tom. That's no right. longer Captain Jordan Tom. That's right. Congrats. Prepare for, uh, okay. prepare for the length of the hair to grow exponentially. You got the flow going now, it's Mr. Go. It's, it's on like Donkey Kong. Congrats, man. Thank you very much. I would say that it, you, I would say that you can, you can, tie the the flow rivaled hair flow going on um while he was in the military until uh he was a wuss and cut it because some colonel yelled at him i think he yelled at it was preemptive i just i didn't want any uh i didn't want any uh, issues my last couple of weeks listen jt excuses are for wusses you either right. want the hair <laughs> or you don't that's it <laughs> Um, I love that Kevin picked up on my little joke there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Nobody um, has more ACL surgeries than Army West Point. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we need hours. <laughs> Apparently, we have to have hours. So yeah. we've tried a few times to wrestle without them. It hasn't worked out very well. But um, Something about needing your knees for your future profession, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know either, but um, yeah, apparently we need ours. Well, welcome back from the Nationals. What's uh, what's your thoughts now that you're a couple weeks post and season's over and I'm assuming you took a couple of days off and spent some time with your family? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, the pace of work changes a little bit. I don't think we're taking any days completely off, but um, yeah, spent a lot of time thinking, and and yeah, some of that's on the golf course, and some of it's not in the office. But spent a lot of time thinking about uh, the season and the national tournament. I mean, I think summing things up, um, I mean, it was a disappointing kind of finish to the NCAA tournament. But honestly, um, I mean, I think our guys probably competed about as well as as they knew how, given the circumstances. Which means that if they didn't know how to compete at a higher level than that, you know, then 
then, then that's my fault for not making sure that they understood it. Uh, I thought their their attitudes were pretty good going into it. Um, I thought that um, they thought they were ready. I think physically they were ready. I think it was pretty obvious once the competition started that kind of emotionally they weren't really prepared for it. Um, and and there's a lot of factors that go into that, and, and we can talk about them. I probably won't name names, you know, in individual situations other than myself. But, um, yeah, there, I mean, there was, like, some pretty tough adversity going into the tournament. And um, and that showed, and it was just some, some situations, I think, that we let get the best of us. And, and we weren't able to put our best performances, you know, together at the right time. And, you know, with a team like ours, we had several guys seated 16, 17. Um, we just needed people to get hot at the right time, you know, to, to kind of catch fire and, and start a streak of winning matches. And we just couldn't quite, you know, like couldn't hit it. You know, we had a couple good, you know, maybe a couple good periods, but it may be a good match, but didn't string a bunch of good matches together. So that part was disappointing, but man, I was proud of the guys. They fought through a lot this season and uh, a lot nobody knew about, uh, a lot nobody knows about. So for them to compete, I think they did as, as, as good as, as they knew how at that time. So we have a lot to build on, that's for sure. What were some of those emotional challenges the guys were walking through? Was it related to the year that was COVID or was it just being at Nationals for the first time? I don't think we had anybody that wrestled there before or was it just a little bit of both? Yeah, so it was everybody's first competition there, but that wasn't it because every year you see people in their first trip there um, win some matches. I think, yeah, I mean, it stems from, you know, so after the EIWA tournament where I felt like we, we wrestled pretty hard, like we were, we were trending in the right direction, like about four or five days after the EIWA tournament, um, we got hit with COVID hard. And, uh, and I think leading up to the NCAA tournament, I think we had like, you know, two of our qualifiers were actually practicing. And, um, you know, and, it, and myself, I was out. You know, you guys know this. Listeners probably don't. But then, you know, I got COVID after the EIWA tournament. I was locked up for 12 days or whatever. So I wasn't in the practice room for the two weeks leading up to the NCAA tournament myself and and one other one of our qualifiers um you know we got out of quarantine on tuesday morning and flew out to st louis that day you know so i mean we we get released from quarantine and fly out to the ncaa tournament on the same day that's not ideal bobby healed uh not able to compete um because you know he, he tested positive on the monday of the tournament that's not ideal and then we have the others you know like a couple other guys got out of quarantine about two days before I did. And uh, so they got a couple practices and then go to the tournament. Marcus Hartman, you know, hadn't wrestled live since like February 8th or 9th. You know, his first time wrestling live was at the NCAA tournament. Unreal. From his injury, you know, he, he, he was injured in a practice. And then the next time he actually wrestled hard, full go, was at the national tournament. You know, that's not good. So I think some of those things, you know, I, I still think we could have competed better. I really do. I just think that the, we, we maybe have let those things get in our head and make us think that we couldn't have competed at a higher level. But listen, there's no doubt, like the, the COVID deal, like you could see that in conditioning. You know, I mean, like if, if, if our guys look tired and they've never looked tired before, there's probably a reason for that. Sure. You know, it's, it's two things. One, they weren't able to train because they have a respiratory infection, you know, and that infection makes it hard to breathe. It makes it hard to, to be in good shape. So, yeah, I mean, it was a tough, really tough kind of 10 days leading into the tournament for sure. How were the guys that were quarantined, the qualifiers, how were they able to maintain their weight while, you know, locked in their room? I, I can't even imagine. So they weren't like, they're not locked in their room. They're locked in a building. Um, and, um, so, you know, we were able to take, um, some bikes over there. There's a rowing machine. Uh, we had a six foot strip of mat we were able to take over there so they could do like stance in motion and, and sprawl, you know, in the basement of the, the dorms. Um, I mean, it was tough. It's like wh what you would do if you were locked in your house right now, if I said, Hey, you're locked in your house and you've got to lose 15 pounds in 10 days, how are you going to do it? That's how they did it. You know, I mean, it's not rocket science. You just... You, you find a way to do it. You, you get the clothes that you need and you work out. Um, it's not ideal, but I mean, our guys were able to do it. And 
they, they haven't used it as an excuse. I haven't heard one of them mention it since. So it's not like they're yeah. using it as a crutch or an excuse. It's just, yeah, they found a way to, to be as prepared as, as they knew how to be. Hmm. Interesting. They're not wusses. They're, they're, they're not wusses. You know, that's, I mean, listen, it's like, what I told them is do they have a lot to be proud of? Absolutely. You know, like, they're, they're going to have some stories to tell when, when they finally get over this, you know, in about 20 years, they'll have some stories to tell about their challenges. They don't, it doesn't feel good right now. It's not an excuse. It's not a moral victory, but man, they didn't use any excuses. They, they didn't give up on themselves and, and they have a hell of a lot to be proud of. And we're bringing a lot of firepower going back into next year. So. Yeah. I mean, so that's exciting. We have four, qualifiers from this year coming back and plus Ben Sullivan who qualified the year prior so five NCAA qualifiers coming back on our team that's exciting and um, you know we were seconds away from qualifiers at 133 and 165 this year um, so those guys if you're that close then you're good enough you know we just didn't get it done um, so that I mean, yeah we have some firepower coming in we got a really impressive recruiting class coming in that's going to compete at a few weight classes right away uh, yeah, it's exciting. There's a lot to be excited about. Well, as we kind of say bye to the class of 2021, you got any kind of parting thoughts for those guys? Seems well, like I just a great group of leaders there. For man, sure. I think what's um, w what you have to talk about when you think about that class is, um, you know, I think back to last year's seniors and, and the way their season ended and, and such a bad deal, you know, where they walk into practice on a Thursday morning. And before they leave practice, their season's over, you know, and, and, and they didn't expect that. Well, now this senior class got to show, you know, what it's like to come back from something like that, you know. And, and, and I mean, in this fall, you know, we didn't talk about it a lot as the season was going on, but I don't know how many practice days we lost. I mean, easily, you know, in the double digits above 20 days of training that we lost, easily above 20 days. And if any, any one individual was able to train for like two or three weeks at a time, that was a luxury, mm -hmm. you know? So it was, they really showed what it's like to be able to come back from a really bad situation in, in, in a, you know, like a, a really tough time and show that you can still keep your goals where they're at. Like you don't have to sacrifice your goals. You don't have to make excuses. You don't have to lower what your goals are. So I think that's going to be their legacy for this program is, um, you know, they're the guys that, that, that led the way and showed that you can still aspire and, and have goals to do some pretty incredible things, regardless of your circumstances. Um, our senior class showed that. I mean, for, for us, you know, we, that's something that um, is invaluable, and, and, and they deserve the credit for showing how we do that. Yeah, I mean, from a standpoint of being a, an athlete this year and on top of it a cadet, I uh, <clears throat> it's hard to put myself in that situation. I saw some different posts, tweets, <clears throat> Facebook comments, and different things from like cadets that were not athletes complaining about the year and talking about just how they, <clears throat> you know, they can't leave and the challenges and all these different things, right? And for pro <clears throat> probably most of the athletes, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, guys, something's in my yeah, throat. This is is a tough topic. Yeah, it's emotional. I think I think probably for most of the athletes at West Point, you know, you don't get to leave all that often. You're with your, you know, your team. You're not going home for for some of the holidays and whatnot. So that's that's kind of typical. But to fight through not knowing whether you're going to compete uh, each weekend and whether you're even be able to practice that day, um, on top of all the other stuff, is is a lot. So for our senior class to uh, lead the way that they did, man, I'm I'm proud of them. So I can only imagine how much you are. Well, um, I think, you know, um, John Anderson um, sent us a, a note before the NCAA tournament and specifically one to Bobby Hill, you know, who, you know, he, God dang, he, Bobby had to test one more time before we leave, you know, and, and, um, and the very last test that he had, you know, he showed up positive and, and wasn't able to go. And, um, you know, and John sent a note and, and, and said, you know, I want you to tell Bobby that, um, you know, the legend of Bobby Hill or the legacy of, of Bobby Hill is just now beginning. Like, I know it seems like this is something that's, you know, it's closing the, the, the book. You know, it's, it's not just a chapter. It's closing a book, you know, a big part of your life. Um, you know, it seems like things are over. But, 
I think that's the, the real message is like, listen, man, I know it feels like some things are ending, but you know what that means is there's some pretty incredible things that are, that are just getting started. So yeah, they did a good job, man. What a tough year. What a challenging year. And, and then there's bigger and better things that lie ahead for them. Shout out John Anderson wrestling this weekend. Yeah, he's coming up. He's the, what, the three seed going into the Olympic trials. I mean, with a very, very real chance to make the Olympic team and represent the United States of America in Tokyo. Uh, what a big freaking deal. So, yeah, we're all pulling for John this weekend. Heck, yeah. Yeah, I feel like we haven't talked about John that much lately. But, yeah, I mean, it's he, – he's definitely flown under the radar. I feel like he, a lot of people – I mean, a lot of people aren't talking about Greco as much. But I feel like John's really flying under the radar. He's got a good shot. I mean, give the man his, his credit. Like – I'm telling you, and, and this isn't a surprise to anybody that, that follows the sport, but you don't go into the Olympic trials as a three seed without having a very real chance to do it. Like, this is not a pipe dream for him. It's a dream for him. I know how hard he's worked for it and how bad he wants it. So, hell yeah. I mean, all of us, if you're, if you're watching or listening, we're all pulling for John Anderson this weekend. I'm trying to pull up the bracket and see who he's got. I'll get back to it when we get – I think he hit some – Who's the kid that wrestled at Wyoming and then transferred to uh, Nebraska Carney? Martinez. I think it'll, if it plays out, have Martinez in the semi. Um, I don't remember the number one seed. And then Joe Rao has a bye to the finals. Um, so, and I'm yeah. I'm trying to remember back how many times he's, he's had battles with, with Rao. Yeah, and he's wrestled Martinez a few times too. So, I mean, these guys are all familiar yeah, with him. Yeah, bracket before, yeah. 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 He's got all right. So Joe Rouse sitting in the finals sort of the best of three. And in the mini tournament, number one seed is Alan Vera. Number two seed is John Anderson. Three Pat Martinez. Oh, Anderson's two. Okay. Two, but he's in the yeah, yeah in the mini, so that's right. Yep. So Turn good luck to John. Smokes. Let's go, John. Let's go, baby. Turn on the smokes. Oh. <laughs> So kind of re rewinding back to NCAAs, I want to get your thoughts, Kevin, on just kind of how it went. I mean, for the listeners who don't know, um, no wrestlers tested positive for COVID, no coaches um, as well. I think that's a testament to, like, how well, how well the tournament was run. You know, what are your thoughts on that and kind of, you know, how everything turned out from a logistics perspective for the tournament? Logistics was great. Um, to me, we're really thankful. Like, I mean, there was a lot – maybe even weeks before the tournament, not, not months, but weeks before the tournament, we weren't sure whether we were having a tournament, you know, like, I mean, to host a wrestling tournament and at the tail end of a pandemic, that's like, that's a big deal. So we're all grateful for the NCAA that they pulled that off. Um, they said something like 5,000 tests were run, you know, over the course of the five or six days. And, um, and that's what I heard, right? Is it, was that right, B-Row? Like zero positives? That's what well, they said. Correct. Yeah, positive. zero. I mean, that's that's pretty remarkable. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. That's pretty. <laughs> it's almost unbelievable. Um, that, that's a lot of tests to not have a single positive. Um, so I'm thankful because our guys were able to have a tournament. Um, you know, the wrestlers that deserved it were able to compete at the NCAA tournament. It's freaking awesome. Without the crowd, it was still an amazing tournament. Like, the energy is still there, and it still means just as much, whether there's 20,000 people in person or 600,000 watching on TV. Um, it still means the same to the competitors. So we should have the tournament. Um, but, yeah, that, I mean, pretty remarkable. So um, the way what they did it is 125 through 157 would go way in in the morning at the arena and wrestle in the morning session. 65 and above would weigh in at the same time, but in a different location. They weigh in at the hotel. So 65 and up, weigh in at the hotel, then they would go test, and then they would go chill for four or five, six hours until they're around. 125 through 57, like I said, weighed in at the arena, wrestled, then went back and tested, you know, and then would come back and wrestle again their second match later on. And it sounds like a lot of moving parts, like that's kind of would be a mess. It was actually like, I loved it. I thought it was great for the wrestlers because 65 and up didn't have to hang out in the arena for, you know, 14 hours that day. Mm -hmm. They were able to weigh in, test, go to the room, take a nap. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Hopefully we can 
we can keep that going. Um, the testing, I mean, it wasn't really an issue. You would just show your result on the way into the arena. You know, you have a security guard there kind of looking at your phone, waving you through, and you'd show them your result. And yeah, it was it. They had it, it, it worked. I mean, it was a lot smoother than, than most of us thought it was going to be going into it. And again, like, you know, the, the no positive test, I mean, that helps. So good on wrestling for that. Good job, wrestling. Good job. We beat COVID. It's freaking amazing. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's almost unbelievable how good we were. Any more questions on the NCAA's bureau? Uh, I mean, I can ask about 100 more just because I want to get Kevin's thoughts. But I'm not going to um, give you – we, we can't do 100. <laughs> It's, but we got time for a few more. Come on, what, what do you want to know? How many, how many of our guys can deadlift 665? I don't know, but guess thing, if they didn't, if that wasn't a goal then, it needs to be now. It needs to be now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, that kid was impressive, like really impressive. Um, true freshman coming in with that type of confidence and, and winning the way that he did, you know, with some tough ride outs. It wasn't exciting wrestling at times, but it was gritty. Um, yeah, good good job on him. He did a good job. So, gives us something that uh, maybe a uh, no comment type uh, answer for this question. But knowing John Smith and wrestling for him, what do you think the dynamic between him and AJ Ferrari is? Um, yeah, I can't say it's not going to be a no comment, but I don't know. Um, you don't win at that level that young without working your ass off, right? Yeah. Um, and so that gets you a lot of respect to begin with. Like you got to work really hard. Um, and, um, enjoying winning, you know, we need more of it. We need, everybody enjoys it. Some people are afraid to show it. Um, looks like the guy enjoys winning and, uh, I he has love the kid. He's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Did I you, love it too. <laughs> did you see the, did you see the, uh, the pitch at the Bedlam video? Uh, I didn't see it. I saw the picture progression of, uh, his shirt just getting removed at some point. So, yeah. so for those that haven't seen it, he threw the opening pitch to the uh, OSU OU baseball game, and he did it in a white beater, obviously. And then after he's done with, <laughs> after he threw a really nice pitch, he walks over to first base and tears his white beater off right down the middle and starts flexing on the crowd. No, he's flexing on <laughs> the OU dugout. On the dugout, and then he goes over and flexes on on the on the Cowboys dugout and gets them all fired up. <laughs> He's flexing on the OU dugout. I don't think any of them said a thing. Um, buddy, yeah. I don't know how many of us can deadlift 665, but we better start. We got to we gotta do I know that's all b has been working on since St. Louis. So, you know, we could just we could just call it a wash, not even worry about a 665 deadlift, come up with some really arbitrary exercise and come up with a really astronomical number for it and claim it. <laughs> That's uh, that's gonna be released next season. That's gonna be on our poster. Six sixty five. Well, I've already or something. I've already come up with the Ferrari wad. It's six rounds of six deadlifts at two twenty five and sixty five double unders for time. Awesome, Boom. man. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I had to get my CrossFit discussion in, so. I mean, obviously. So we'll be looking for videos. If you can post a video on your Instagram of that workout, that'd be cool. <laughs> uh, but it, it, on, that, uh, on that note, uh, breaking news, Chandler Smith has uh, uh, started a Snapchat. I just got a notification that he created a Snapchat. So right on. how do we find any of our listeners out there want to see him on Snapchat. I don't know. I'm guessing it's, it's Blacksmith, his same handle. Um, but I just, it just popped up literally right now. So, little, I mean, the, little man segue, own right? a, the man doesn't own a shirt and now he's on Snapchat. I'm in. So, <laughs> I'm in. All Say right. More. Say less, fam. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, here's a little off topic something me and B were talking about. We need to institute a B Hall pin chain. Like, everybody had the pin chain going for a little bit, it's, it's gone now. We bring it back, but with the B Hall pin chain, that's real. Good. I'm for it. I'm 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 totally for it. I, you know, when we were talking about this earlier this year, I was saying, what if we did the Beha pin mask? 
But hopefully next year we're not wearing masks anymore. I hope not. The mask, the mask could have been sick. It could have been like a helmet like type of mask, you know, like really own it. Like you really got to wear it. Um, you could put a chain on that mask. No, I am yeah. looking forward to it. Listen, I saw B. Rowe in St. Louis, and he, he said, you know, he's got this chain mask. He came out with something that looked like somebody threw it to him at Mardi Gras, had these colorful beads on it with a mask. <laughs> like, I get that out of here. I, nobody's wearing that. Um, but, um, yeah, the B-Hall pin chain. We're for it, man. So, That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maybe we do away with the Army A watches that you get at the banquet and you just get a B Hall chain. Ah, man. I did away with those a few years ago. So, Ooh. yeah. Tough. Yeah. Very well, watches. <laughs> Glad I got one. <laughs> oh, man. It was time. It was time. <laughs> no one wears a lot of this dropped uh, watch like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I still have mine. In. Mine's prop. Mine's propped up in my in my bedroom on my little nightstand thing. Next to his uh, CrossFit gear. <laughs> <laughs> Looking into the into Jordan. The Jordan acts like he's not into CrossFit as much as I am, and he's more into CrossFit than I am. I just don't talk about it. Can you be in to, and to, not you, talk about it? You don't talk about it to the listeners, you, but then after this, you'll blow up the group text with Chandler and be like, oh, I did 21.3, so good, oh my gosh. I couldn't I, do my muscle ups so, so I, I substituted him for strict pull-ups. Is that okay, guys? Uh, <laughs> false. I've, I've never done anything like that. <laughs> JT, I'm, I'm sure you, you were asking a question about wrestling or something. I was. Like, I mean, that's what I can hear. <laughs> back, back to the, the podcast that people want to hear. What it, what's the off season look like for our guys this year? I mean, crazy year this year. Are they going to get the normal kind of off season where they're going to some freestyle tournaments? Are they not? Are they still restricted on practice schedules? How's that look? So we're going to get back to it. Um, it's not going to be normal. Like we're not going to go to we're not going to send big groups anyway to like U.S. Open, Junior Open, universities. It's just not the off season for that. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's what our team needs. So even if it was a normal spring, I don't think that's that's what we need. Listen, here's the deal. We were the national tournament. We had matches that were very winnable. The bottom line is we didn't execute in those matches and other people did. And listen, they weren't ready to compete. Bottom line, our team was not ready. COVID, quarantine, training, head coach in quarantine, it doesn't matter. Like all of those probably added up and, 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 and didn't make things any easier. But the bottom line is we didn't execute when we had to at the national tournament. So some of that's technical, some of it uh, was focus, some of it was um, just needing some more battles. So throughout the month of April, we're pretty much gonna practice six days a week throughout the month of April. And uh, not every day is gonna be like crazy hard. Some days are gonna be pretty easy. But it's going to be addressing those areas that I think that we, you know, that, that we need to address. I mean, we have a team with five qualifiers coming back. That's some firepower, man. Um, you know, and at some point, we got to get past the, yeah, we had seven qualifiers again. Good job. You know, five years ago, that was something to celebrate. But now it's, it's, it's expected. And um, we've got guys on the, uh, on the team now that, that can go deep into the national tournament. That can be wrestling on – you know, Saturday morning, Saturday night at the national tournament. And, uh, and we've got to do what it takes to get them there. So that's the train at a higher level than we've been doing. And we're going to start, you know, here in just a couple of days. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. On that same line. So uh, their summer training, has that kind of been mapped out as far as, is it kind of similar to a lot of the protocols that went through last year? Um, Man, I don't even know if I want to get into what graduation looks like. They, I'm sure they got plans, but I don't really care to know the specifics. Is it going to be really restrictive or dialed I mean, back from what we know? I, I can't give you this, the uh, specifics if I wanted to because I don't know yeah. about graduation and, and summer training. So since I've been here, I've made a hard push. It's, a, it's really important to me that we get more guys in summer school and that they're here taking a summer school class or two, maybe three and they're training during that time because mm -hmm. it makes the fall or the spring semester a little bit lighter academically. It's more time here to train with coaches and partners. Um, so we have a good group that's taken uh, summer school. We'll continue to push for that. Um, if we're able to have camps here, we'll have some guys here helping with camps and training. So, um, yeah, I mean, I anticipate actually kind of getting back to normal this summer. Um, vaccines are out, I think, you know, by that time. 
all of us coaches, we've already been vaccinated. Um, and um, I think all cadets will be by then. So I think we'll be kind of a normalish summer. That's positive news. Right? I mean, finally, yeah. of it, you know, it's like we did, our guys did, they fought so hard this year to do the right things, wear masks, stay distant. Coaches got vaccines, you know, all this. And we still got shut down with COVID at the very end, like the most important time. It's like, man, we're sick of it. We're ready to get back to normal, you know, because we've been doing what we think are the right things. And it was inevitable. It's like we couldn't keep it away forever and it just hit us at the wrong time. So sooner we get back to normal, the better. And then as far as uh, the prepsters, I mean, are they going to be able to kind of integrate into some of the off-season training, at least this spring? Yeah, I think we'll have, be able to have some RTC workouts this spring. There's, this, there's still a dead period in recruiting, which means any RTC practices, I can't be there for it. Got it. Um, but uh, our RTC coach can. So, yeah, hopefully we're having some RTC practices starting, you know, as early as next week where we're able to get all the, all, all the guys that are eligible and qualified to be part of an RTC, get them together, let's scrap. Yeah, they had a great – Are there any rules – like. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Are there dude. any um, – I was going to say, are there any, like, rules limiting, like, uh, the prepsters, like, from – not from an athletics perspective, but from, like, a USMA regulation standpoint as far as, like, them seeing them and interacting because of, like, the bubble? Yeah. Um, or you guys have to, like, go through waivers to make, get exemptions for that because it's, like, athletics and they're – um, like having official uh, RTC practices? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this year it's like everything is tough to go see somebody that's not in your, in your bubble. But I mean, the reality, I guess the, the reality of it is you can call it the ugly truth or whatever you want. I mean, at this point, um, a large percentage of everybody has had it or has, you know, been vaccinated against it. So at some point we've got to get back to normal, you know, I mean, how, how much longer can we, play the, um, you know, the game where, well, we just don't know, we don't know, so we don't do anything at all. You know, I think we, with what we do know, I think it's pretty safe to get a certain number of people together. There's, it won't be everybody, but um, the situation right now, yeah, we can get a group together and they, they should be able to train. And then as far nice. as, did you say something, Biro? No, I just said nice. Yeah. <laughs> As far as the dead period still, and how does that uh, how does that affect uh, recruiting beyond the prepsters? I mean, high school. Man, we haven't been able to be face to face with high schoolers for over a year now, you know, or right out a year. So, um, the dead period we, we anticipate is going to be lifted at the May thirty first or thirtieth. What is it? Um, June first. Let's just say that. That's crazy. Yeah. So hopefully in June we're able to recruit. You know, we can get face to face with high school kids. Um, I'm sick of looking at them through a computer and texting them on the phone all the time. I'd, I'd like to see them face to face. I know they're excited to get on campus too. So, um, yeah, but until then, there's no face to face with recruits at all on campus, off campus, you name it. So, what is your allowable contact? Is it just correspondent via email or what? Yeah, no, you can call, text, FaceTime, okay. Zoom, email, you know, whatever you want, but you just can't see somebody face to face. So guys that are high school seniors that have committed will their their first day on campus will basically be our day. Yeah, we'll try to get them here on campus in June um, before that. But I mean, that's, you know, a month before. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically, you know, they'll take their official visit. If they didn't visit last year as a junior, sure. they'll take their official visit sometime in June and show up, you know, the next month getting ready to start. That's crazy. Wild, right? That's crazy, especially when you're talking about the commitment that you're making going to West Point. And I say that in a positive way. I mean, some of the aspects that you really want to market and get the kid to see is what you're signing up for, which is to be a part of something really cool and something big and kind of experience as much yeah. as you can in one, one weekend, like the core cadets and the history and the, the lineage and all that. Man, that's, uh, that's tough. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I mean, I'm proud of our staff because we put together a heck of a recruiting class, even in a really difficult time, like, you know, it's, it's no different than classes we've had in the past that may not be the highest rank, but I promise you they're going to be really impactful. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's guys here that are, that are going to be national brand names that aren't right now. Nobody knows them. They're not talking about them yet. By the time their career is done, everybody's going to know who they are. So that, that's fun because we have a good class. Love to hear that. 
Well, I, I got a good picture of what's, what's going on. b you got some other questions? Yeah, on one on the recruiting topic. So I feel like when we're recruiting in a normal world, like we wait till bring the guys, bring recruits in for the fall so they can, so the whole core cadets is there and there's football games and events and they get to see everything. Does that kind of change now that, you know, maybe, you know, it gets lifted May 31st. Are you bringing people in the summer when the cadets aren't, you know, when the core cadets aren't there? Not, well, not the incoming seat. This incoming guys, but the, uh, maybe the rising seniors or rising juniors? Yeah, I don't think we're going to bring in any class of 2022 guys on official visits. Unofficial, yeah. But official visits, you know, where we have them on campus for two days, uh, we won't do that until the fall when everybody's back for the class of 2022. High school seniors graduating in 21, we'll get them here as soon as we can. 22, we'll wait. And by that point, class of 23 we'll be able to have on campus as well so I mean a lot of kids are taking their official visits during the fall of their junior year now so if, if we have recruits that really want to do that then we're going to bring them out gotcha yeah well what else do you want to tell the fan base and the people about Army wrestling coach man I, I I think um you know the the biggest thing is these guys if you're a fan of Army wrestling, you should be really proud of the guys this year because we don't, we don't talk about it. I know I'm kind of – I've brought it up a few times. I don't mean it as an excuse. Um, I'm just saying that, you know, nobody really understands the battles these guys were fighting all year long. Um, you know, like I said, as far as missed training days, days locked up in quarantine, um, either from contact tracing or having COVID. Um, you know, our qualifiers going at I me, mean, what it was like six people tested positive after the EIWA tournament. It was brutal, you know, and, um, and, and, and to not complain about it, not make excuses and, and, and you know, march ahead and, and go to St. Louis with your goals in mind and compete as hard as you knew how to do. Um, I'm really proud of them. I think everybody that that's a fan of our program should be as well. And, um, I think our guys, you know, that are coming back, they're going to, they've learned a lot about themselves from that tournament, you know, about coming back from injuries, coming back from, from sickness, um, coming from situations where they couldn't train the way they wanted to. But, you know, they've learned that none of that matters. You know, it's like in the end, um, I think that they know they could have given a little bit more. And that's a tough lesson to learn, you know, but sometimes you have to learn it to, to, to know. It's like it's not something anybody can tell you. You have to experience it. And we had those experiences this year where guys – you know, they can really grow from that. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm, I'm so pumped about, you know, the team we're going to have next year and, and we've got to get a lot better. We know that, but we're already starting to work on next year's schedule and it's going to be really challenging. Like I'll tell you this, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent, but if you think back to January this year, you know, when I'm sitting there um, for like six hours waiting for, Long Island to show up like a we gonna wrestle or not, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't their, their program's fault. I'm like, F this man. I am, I'm not doing this, this stuff again next year. Like I'm not sitting around waiting on to figure out if the team can come up here and compete or not when it's probably not going to be that competitive of a dual meet anyway. So I made the decision right then that day, like next year we're getting on the road as much as we can. We're going to the best teams that we can get on the schedule. So I expect us to travel. I expect to hit multiple teams at a conference that are pretty highly ranked. Let's I'm go. Excited. Yeah, let's go. That's what I'm saying. It's like, let's, let's oh. get out of here. Let's travel. We're going to have a squad next year. Let's challenge ourselves. And, and so when we go to the national tournament, like we've been through the fire, like our guys are going to know that they're ready. Mm -hmm. Get me all fired up. Got to wait, wait eight months. Let's do it. On that note, Chick uh, actually asked a question about what are the chances we can wrestle Rutgers next year? Uh, He's like, to, he was all fired up about it. Yeah, I'm talking to Scott Goodell. Um, we're already talking about it. So I don't want to say when or, or, or where yet because it's just, you know, it's just him and I talking about it. But we both agree. Christmas that we Day, it. Russia. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> want it, we want it to happen I, I i promise you that like we both want to wrestle each other it's just a matter of getting it done i think i think something that'd be pretty cool you know is is to have another marquee match the night before the army navy football game like we did a couple years ago 
um, that would yeah. be cool. So that's something that we're, we're kind of talking about and thinking about as well. And it's in Jersey. Oh, Rutgers, night before Army Navy. In the Meadowlands. What? <laughs> yes, in the stadium. Let's go. Um, I'm a big, no, I'm a Friday, big fan Friday night for uh, – Oh, man. I mean, I like that. That that sounds nice. But I'm also a big fan of doing two Navy matches, like like Bedlam, like one before the football game and one later on. Like, why not? You know what? I mean, as I'm sitting here, that's the first time I've ever – anybody's ever brought that up, having two of those dual meets. I'm here mm-hmm. for it. My this initial – entertaining reaction, match of the year. Why not? Let the sparks fly twice. My initial reaction to that is, hell yeah. Why not? That's a – that. damn, JT – Whip them twice. Let's go. That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll talk about that. I think that deserves some some attention. I mean, I, I mean, I'm like full of crazy ideas. I think that they should have matches at Fort Bragg and Fort Campbell, and if Navy wants to have one at wherever their posts are, I don't know because I don't give two craps. I mean, that's good exposure for them and good for us. I mean, it's 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 a learning experience for everybody. So. Why I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I mean, it's kind of late tonight. We're recording this at like 9 p.m., but I'm not gonna start working on it tonight. Pretty soon, though. I mean, that's a that's a good idea. We're gonna look love it. it. Yeah, love it. I mean, Fort, Fort Bragg is approved to uh, for Army uh, Army NC State uh, in a match on the airfield. We were talking approved. about that in the past. And B-Row, years. Yeah, Biro yeah. put some legwork in for us. He got that approved, and, and it's just a matter of, of figuring that out. Like. I've been. I, I talked to Pat about it a couple times. Can we wrestle at Fort Bragg? Can we do this? I think uh, we we would both like to do it too. So that's That'd another. Be great. Idea. Yeah. Well, that was fun. We're gonna give coaches evenings back, and we're gonna get back on some of the alumni uh, interview style episodes. And uh, I can't on. wait. Now I can start to submit questions to the alum. You got to put those out there. And let me know who's going to be on. So now I can start asking the questions. Yeah. So whoever the fans want to hear, drop it in the comments. Put who you want to hear from. We'll start making out the schedule for the next couple of weeks and uh, get it popping. Man, I can't wait. And listen, JT, B. Row, I mean this. Um, I appreciate you guys. Like um, I think our fans do. You know, the our dozens of listeners, you know, that spend some time, um, you know, wanting to know a little bit more about our program and, and the things that are going on. But, um, you know, it's like you guys are taking time out of your lives to, to do this. And uh, we appreciate you helping build our program, get the good word out. So, man, let's keep it going. There's a lot more wrestling to talk about through the spring, a lot more alumni to get to know. I'm excited for the shows, excited to keep growing. Appreciate you guys. Drop a comment who you want to hear from. Get on, uh, I guess it's Peacock and NBC Sports this weekend. Watch John Anderson become our rep uh, for Greco, baby. Go, John. Turn on the smokes. Get you some B-Hall gear. What else? And donate to the West Point Wrestling Club. That's it, man. We yes. Need, yeah. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned on the West Point Wrestling Club. We've got some things coming. We're going to grow quite a bit in this off season. I'll be back to talk about that at a later date. Just stay tuned. Let's go. All right, guys. All right, Coach. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Uh Thanks for tuning in to the B-Hall Radio Show. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe and leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform. If there's something you'd like to hear on a future show, reach out to us on any of our social media, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Or you can reach us at email, bhaw.radio at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts, and as always, go Army, be Navy.